Well, we're going to open up in prayer at this time and then continue on with our, with our worship. Father, we, uh, we love you, and we do worship you for who you are, and we thank you for your love for us, and thank you that we can gather here on a warm Saturday evening, and we can gather here and worship you and lift your name up, and, we're, we're, and when we do that, you are here in our presence, and you minister to us in a powerful, personal way, and we thank you for that. Lord, we uh, anticipate what you have for us tonight in this service. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll continue on with our worship. Join me and sing this again. My soul secure, your promise sure, your love endures. Always do that again. My soul secure, your promise sure, your love endures. Always, one more time. My soul secure.
And time is in his hands 
serve a great God. How great is our God. He loves us so much, he says, I want you to cast all your cares on me. Yes, you may be seated if you'd like. He loves us so much, he says, uh, hey, just give me all of your burdens. Cast it all on me because I care for you. So we're going to take time to do that tonight. And I know that we are going through things. We, uh, Don Schwartz, Kellen's father-in-law that's in ICU in the hospital, and uh, he needs a touch from the Lord. There's others, others that I know that uh, are going through difficult situations. And I was reading, I was reading just uh, the last couple of days in John. John's a great book, you know that? Boy, what, a, what an awesome book the Gospel of John is. And Jesus is ministering and his close, close friend Lazarus has, has died. And uh, he waited, of course. We all know the story. And they get there and, and Mary said, if you would have just been here. If you would have just been here. And he says, uh, do you believe? He says, I am the resurrection and the life. And so for us tonight, do we believe? It's said there that his spirit groaned because... They, they didn't believe, they, they doubted, they, weren't, they didn't understand. But we understand, and we, we have a faith and a, and a, solid, a solid history of, of God answering our prayers. He has been there time and time again. 
He is in my life, and I know he has in everybody's lives that's in here tonight. And so now then we can just say, okay, yes, I'm going through something. But I know that my God, my God that's, that loves me with an everlasting love, cares, and he wants me to bring it to him. And so we're going to do that. So if you have a need, just I just want you to stand uh, if you have a need. And then we're just going to uh, go to prayer. And then uh, thank you, Matt, and whoever else wants to stand. And then, you know what, if you, if you want to just go and lay a hand on these that are standing as we pray, and we're just going to agree that God hears us, His Word tells us that, and that He's going to meet the need that's, that's represented from standing. Okay, let's do that. Father, we, we love you and worship you. Just read where Jesus said, the Father is greater than I, and I went, oh my. Father, you are so loving and so caring and so kind and gracious. Your, your plan of salvation that you would send your son to die for us. We thank you for that. And not only that, when, when he went to the cross, he took a beating for us. He was beaten and whipped. And the stripes on his back, it says that his stripes were for our healing. By his stripes, we are healed. And so, Lord, we claim healing tonight in those that are standing. Lord, there is just... There is just a myriad of things that are going on in people's lives. There's physical needs. There are, there are, are needs of, of provision that need to happen, of salvation, of rededication, of, Lord, of relationship issues that are happening. Lord, maybe it's a, a relationship between me and you, whatever that is, in your presence as we are here tonight and we feel and know your presence is here, there is healing, there is deliverance, there is forgiveness. There is rededication. There is all the provision. There's everything that we need is here tonight. And we just have to reach out and believe. You said your job is to believe and to claim it. And we do that tonight. And we praise you, Lord, that we can stand on your promises that are in your word. Your word is alive. Your word is powerful. Your word changes our lives. Your word gives us hope. Your word encourages us. Your word heals us. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that's in us, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that we will tap into that powerful spirit that we have in us. And Lord, every day of our lives, every moment as we go out, Lord, that we would just tap into that and say, okay, Lord, here we go. We're on another day, Lord. Help me, help me to be who you want me to be today. Lord, I pray that you will help us to do that. We love you. We worship you. We thank you. You are great. How great is our God? It can't be measured. You are beyond measure. You are beyond measure. And our words fall short. Lord, help us to live our lives saying thank you for all you have done for us. In Jesus' name, the name above all names, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Powerful time, is All right. And I think that, you know what, we, uh, it would be good if we, uh, and I can just, David, do you want to help me out? We're just going to take an offering right now. Um, and uh, that's all right. You guys can go ahead and, and sit down. And we're going to go ahead and take an offering. You know what, this is Saturday night, and things, uh, sometimes they don't just happen real smoothly, but that's okay. It's Saturday night. It's Saturday Night Live here at St. John's. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to worship you with our tithe and our offering. Lord, what, a, what an awesome privilege it is. You have blessed us beyond measure, and we thank you. No, so now, Lord, we're just going to give back to you. Lord, your word says that you love a joyful giver, and we just want to be joyful givers because we know, Lord, that we can never outgive you, and, Lord, that whatever we give to you, you will multiply Lord, to your intended use. And we thank you for that, and we know that. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Mel. Well, we're going to talk tonight about, a little bit about the, the Faith Hall of Fame. I was thinking the other day as Mel's finishing up, and this is just kind of a, is it prelog? Um, I was thinking, I mentioned it to Stephanie a couple of weeks ago, as we've, uh, as we've had things happen in our, 
in this church, and people have come to know the Lord, and they've given their hearts to the Lord, they've rededicated their lives to the Lord, and and, and I was just sitting at lunch, and I was thinking about that, and, and, and the thought popped into my mind, I'm just going to share a short story, and I, it's not some thing, it was just a, a blessing that God gave, gave me, okay, I'm, I'll, just, I'll just go there with that, okay. Um, but in 1975, I was a rookie in New York, and I led the team in appearances that year. I had 54 appearances as a rookie, and so I... The Lord blessed me, and I was able to, uh, to have a pretty good year that year. And I remember this one particular game, and, uh, and, this, and the, the reason I'm going to say this is because it reminds me of this. Our, our, our district superintendent was here uh, a few weeks ago, and, and then he was at a conference in Turlock that I was at, and, and he was telling us that, you know, we, we don't celebrate well. We really don't celebrate well. Uh, we could do better with that. You know, sometimes when... When people fall, ministers maybe, they, they fall and, and they go through the restoration period of time. They do all the work. They do everything. And it should be a celebration of that and not just, you know, nothing. So in, in light of that, I was, I was thinking of this one particular time that um, I, came in, I came in a game at, there in New York. And we were playing the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, it was in the bottom of the ninth inning. No, it wasn't. It was the top of the ninth inning because we were home. We were, uh, we were ahead, I think it was 3-2, to two, by, by a run. Uh, the bases were loaded, and there was one out, and I came in the game. And so I, I was able to, um, with God's help, get this person to hit into a double play that ended the game. All right? So the game was, the game was ended now. So, and, and just bear with me here, because this kind of just goes, you can just kind of play this out. Um, as a as a pitcher as a, a reliever, you know you're you're really no, known for your saves. Okay, interesting word, right? Saves. You saved the game, <clears throat> and uh, so at that particular night, uh, there was oh man, a lot of people there, fifteen twenty thousand people there at the stadium, and when the game when that happened and people they just erupted in this joyous celebration clapping and yelling and screaming and and my name was was being flashed on the big jumbo scoreboard it was you know that they had there you know rick rick you know and that was just just this incredible celebration because i saved a game so as a as a pitcher as a relief pitcher if you the, the analogy of this kind of kind of goes uh you have enough saves and you do it for enough, you get the, what they call the Fireman of the Year Award. So now that you're a Fireman of the Year, if you get enough saves, and you've, you've put out enough fires, okay? Sometimes I add gas to the fire, but that's okay. That's another, that's another story for another message. But anyway, but if you do that enough for enough years, then you go to the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. Well... Personally, I mean, I, I would rather be known in the Hall of Faith. I would rather that would be who. Now, the Hall of Fame, I'm not saying take anything away. That's a, that's a great accomplishment. I'm not just saying that because I'm never, never going to go there. <laughs> I'm going to go there and see it one time, but, but I'm not just saying that. But that's, that's earthly. That's the earthly reward here. Heavenly reward, when you have people that are that are raising their hands to accept Jesus Christ, rededicating their life. Do you know, the Bible tells me that there's a cel- that angels rejoice. Angels, there is a celebration in heaven. And I was thinking, I thought, you know, I don't know. It seems, I know it sounds crazy, but we had somebody that we had a couple weeks ago, but somebody raises their hand to accept the Lord, and we just, just erupt in this thunderous applause, and we have his name just flashing on the screens. Yes! And it's, you know, just celebrating the save. The save. Now, we know that the Bible tells us that Jesus is the starter and the closer of our faith. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. I can tie this stuff in, you guys. I can tie this in. There are starters and there are, are relievers. There are there are planters and there are waterers. 
And then there are harvest, those that, those that get the harvest, the closer. I mean, there's just so many analogies there and, uh, that, that apply. I want to be, be a part of the Faith Hall of Fame of my Lord and my Savior is what I want to be. We're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Faith is a small word with huge implications. Matthew 17, 20 recorded the words of Jesus for us, his te- for us, teaching that faith the size of a mustard seed is enough. That the faith as tiny as that, we would be able to move the mountains of the impossibility in our lives. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? Have you ever seen the size of a mustard seed? It's really, really, really small. And Jesus says that if you have faith that size, that you can move mountains. So that's, I don't, I don't know, if, and I don't know if we, any of us, totally, fully grasp and understand the power of the Holy Spirit in us that we have. At our, at, at any, any time, anything that's going on at our disposal, anything that happens, we have the power of God that raised Jesus from the dead living in us. And now he says, now then, I'm in you. Now then we can just go and all things, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You, know, there's, you, you, don't, you go through difficult times. He is as close as your breath. He said, you just, you're going through a difficult time. Jesus, help me. Help me. I mean, I've, I, I pray all the time when, when I'm driving. Yeah, Mel, that's true. I do. And I'm just being honest, you guys. It's just, you know, and, I, and, and the thing that gets me now is knowing what, what Hebrews 4 says, that he knows our thoughts, but he even knows the intent of our thoughts. I said, oh, no. He knows the intent. So I can, you know, I can fool whoever, but not him. You can't fool him. So he knows it. So now then, I, there's no, no, so now I just, I just go, mostly when I'm driving, I'm saying, Lord, forgive me for the intent. Forgive me for what I'm about. I know what I'm thinking. I know what I'm trying not to, th- and so just help, just, please, just redo, forgive me, Lord, help me. Because there's some crazy people out there. The book of Matthew is an instruction to the New Testament and to the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew wanted his readers to understand that Israel had largely rejected Jesus and his kingdom, refusing to believe. Unable to find faith in him as Redeemer and Lord because he had come to them as a spiritual leader and not as the political Messiah that they had been longing for. They thought he was the political leader that they were longing for. Matthew presented Jesus as he is, the Messiah of the Old Testament prophecies, come to be the Savior of those who would believe in him as the Son of the living God, the Messiah King. The key verses of Matthew are in chapter 16 and verses 16 and 17 where Peter is answering the Lord's question, who do you say that I am? And that's the question that we would ask, that he would ask of us. Who do you say that I am? Peter responded in faith, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied back, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven revealed that to you. Through the pages of Scripture in Matthew, readers can come to understand the works, the power, and the authority of the kingdom that we uh, can become a part of through saving faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And you may be here today thinking that you do not see yourself as a person of strong faith. You may find yourself often discouraged and wonder if you will ever reach the level of spiritual maturity that you believe you should. Perhaps you even wonder what the Lord sees in you at all. We can all ask ourselves that question, and we all probably do ask that question from time to time. Who am I, Lord, that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you, the God of the universe, should concern yourself with with me? Who am I that you could ever use me for the advancement of your kingdom? There's two songs that pop out on that scripture right there. Okay? Israel Houghton, you know, powerful popular song who am i that you are mindful of me that you love me right or that you that you see me call for when i call is it true that you are thinking of me how you love me it's amazing i am a friend of god we are we are 
Who am I that you are mindful of me? The other one is, who am I that a king would bleed and die for? I mean, it's just, there's just, yeah. In Isaiah 55, in verses 8 and 9, the Lord says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. God is sovereign. We can't come close to his thinking and the way his ways. We don't understand it. We have to have faith and we have to trust. He has looked into our hearts and found there a, there a measure of faith and he has chosen us to be his people and expects us to guard this treasure we have been given and to continue to grow in faith and maturity throughout our journey here on this earth. In the first six verses of Matthew, we find an incredible list of people who ended up in the Faith Hall of Fame. There is a liar, a deceiver. There's a prostitute, an adulterer, and a murderer. If we'd been doing the choosing, most of these people wouldn't have, wouldn't have made the cut. All were sinners saved by grace, just as you and I are. And all of them were given a place in history in the Hall of Faith. God can redeem our past and give us a magnificent future as we put our trust in Him and step out in faith to follow him. And that's just what Rahab the harlot did. She placed her faith and trust in the Lord, and her faith took on life when she stepped up and put that faith and trust into action. Because of her faith, her life was forever changed. Joshua 2 tells us the story of the two spies sent by Joshua to view the layout of the city of Jericho before they were going to go across the, across the Jordan into the promised land. God sovereignly led these two men directly to the house of Rahab, the one person in the whole city who had not only heard about God and his mighty deeds, but she believed in him and trusted that he could save her. The only person there. So she took the spies into her home, hid them from the king of Jericho as he sought to capture them. And she said to them, she says to the two spies, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on the earth beneath. Wow. Now therefore, she, she continues on, Now therefore I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you also show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token. And spare my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. The two spies gave her their word, and she let them down by a rope through her window so that they could escape. Before the men departed, they gave her a scarlet cord to hang in her window and told her to gather all of her family into her house and remain there until the battle was over. Only by taking this action could she and her family be saved. So we're just going to see what she, what she did here. Her sacrifice... She was daring. Rahab's faith was daring. She was willing to sacrifice her life for a cause she knew to be of God. Where did she get her faith? Where did, she was the only person in Jericho. Where did she get from God? Absolutely. She stepped out in faith and risked everything, and God richly rewarded her. She stepped out in faith. She risked it all. You know, it's part of, part of what we heard down south and part of, of what is, is powerful is to hear people's stories. Story of Rahab. There's also a story of whoever steps out in faith and risks everything. This is something that Sherry and I have experienced in our lives. When you step out and you risk it all, and God says, it's okay. I've got you, and I know I have a plan for you, and I'm going to take care of you. And he has done that, and he has done that. She stepped out in faith, 
Anytime we step out in faith and risk everything, God richly rewards us. That, that step of faith, that leap of faith. Um, in um, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the, the, uh, the Last Crusade, right at the end of that movie, whenever he has to go through those three, three things to get over to the chalice, right? And, uh, but that's, that, uh, that last one was his leap of faith. That one is so powerful. They're all good, but I mean, that, that's so powerful because the, the imagery of that, you see it, and you go, man, that is what God is asking us to do. He's asking us to take a step of, a leap of faith and step out when you see nothing, and he's there. And, of course, that, if you remember that movie, that leap of faith, he had to, he had to step out, and it was just this bottomless chasm that, that was there. That all, that's all he could see was death. <laughs> that's all he could see. And he had to, in faith, he had to step out and know that, believe what that said, that there will be something there, but he didn't see it. And I was like, oh, that's a powerful image, isn't it? He stepped out, and boom, there was the bridge. It just, and it came, and he just, wow. That's what God is asking us to take our leap of faith in whatever it is that we're going through in our lives, and you'll be richly re rewarded for that. She asked for a sign. She was given a scarlet rope as a sign of salvation for her and her family. The scarlet rope was a sign of salvation. She was brought out of an accursed city and brought out of her sins, which were as scarlet. It's a real powerful, powerful image. By her faith, she and her family were saved and, and became for us a powerful illustration of God's divine saving grace. Rahab was a woman that God took from the dunghill of life. Her family tree did not matter, nor what she had done didn't matter. What mattered was her faith, her belief in God, which was proved true when she not only spoke the words of faith, but acted upon them. She didn't only speak them, but she acted on them. And her status, there's three references in the New Testament that revealed to us how she became a faithful follower of the Lord. Number one, her place in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11, by faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. Rahab is the only woman besides Sarah who is listed in the great cloud of witnesses in the Hall of Faith. Rahab the harlot and Sarah. What a manifestation of divine grace it is to find the one-time prostitute ranked with saints like Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Joseph, Moses, the list goes on. It's an amazing. Oh, church. Two, James writes, Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out and set them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Faith had wrought in her a change of heart and life and enabled her to hide the spies, having confidence that God would triumph over his enemies. The third thing, the third place is her listing in Matthew in the ancestry of Jesus Christ. Oh my word, you guys. Her remarkable faith was a sanctifying faith leading her to a pure life. One of the two spies she hid was Salmon who paid her back for his life by marrying her. And Rahab, the ex-harlot, became a wife and a mother and an ancestress in the royal line from which Jesus would come as the savior of lost souls. If you read the line, because from, from Rahab and Salmon, they had Boaz. You got Ruth and Boaz. Think about it. Think about it. You okay? You all right, Gail? All right, so that is an amazing, amazing thing that she, that now then she goes from this harlot to now then she's in the line of Jesus Christ in her, in her lineage. It is amazing. But what about us? How are we doing? Do we find that our faith is growing stronger and more certain with each passing day? Because it is as we grow closer to our Savior in our walk with Him that we also grow in our faith. 
It is our faith that allows us to trust God and His plan for our lives and for the lives of our loved ones. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 teaches us that we've got to trust the Lord with all of our heart. And we've got to lean not on our understanding. In all of our ways, we'll acknowledge Him and He will direct our path. Are we trusting Him with all of our hearts? In everything we do, are we seeking Him in prayer? When we come to Him in faith, we can, we can be certain that He hears us. We know that He hears us. Prayer itself is an act of faith. A stepping out and trust that God will hear us when we call. It is faith that submits our weaknesses to Him and to His divine will. It is by faith we trust Him to do what is best in every area of our lives. Faith joins our hearts with God so that we can learn to live according to His perfect will. As we mature in our relationship with God by stepping out in faith to pray, to meditate on His Word and follow His leading, our faith will grow. And as our faith grows, we are able to relinquish our desire to be in control and order our own steps. And instead, turn that control over to the Lord as we trust in and as, he, as we trust Him and, and He leads us in the way that we should go. Faith believes that God is good and that His thoughts and plans toward us are good. And if I truly believe that, I can open up my hands and submit to His will for my life and to all that He has for me. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans that I have for you. Every one of us, every one of us can put our names there. God says, Rick, I know the plans that I have for you. It's not to harm you, but it's to give you a hope and a future. And you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. That's what it goes on to say. It's a powerful thing to spend time seeking the Lord, reading His Word. It's, it's just, you know, the Holy Spirit is so powerful, and it teaches us, you know, when... The plan of salvation is amazing. So God the Father says, okay, Jesus. They all knew it from before, before anything ever was created, knew it. Jesus was going to have to come and give his life for us. And then he was going to go and return to the, to the right hand of the Father. And he says, but that's okay. Don't, don't be afraid. I'm not going to leave you orphans. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And that's what, the new, that's what we now have. So now then we live in this wonderful covenant, this new covenant of his, and we have the Holy Spirit of God living in us. That's what he said. I'm going to put my laws in their hearts and, and my commands in their hearts and minds so that it will always be with them. There will be no longer going once a year to do all the, and all the sacrifice. No more. We are, we're now under grace. The law's done. Grace, thank you. That's where we're at. And oh, so we just see this says, now just trust me. Trust me with your life. Whatever is going on in your life, it's just you're going on as you're carrying on a conversation with Almighty God daily. Just like we would talk to one another. Hey, it's me again, Lord. Here I am. You know, I've got, got things going on. But you know, here's the thing. I know that you, you're doing things around me and you want to use me, so... Help me be aware of what you're doing and not just focused on my stuff. Help me be aware of what's going on around my life and let me somehow use me in that way. That's what he wants to do. And boy, it is a powerful thing. It's so energizing and it's, so, it's such an encouragement when you, when you see that and know that. That whenever you're walking out and you're living this life and you're just living in the Spirit, you're walking in the Spirit, you're not... Yeah, you know, we got stuff going on. Lord, I know you're going to take care of my... I, I, got, I got things going on. You know, I've got, I've got a loved one that doesn't know you, and I'm going to claim him for you. And, and I've got kids that need help, and I've got provision. I, all these things. I've got health issues, Lord. You know all that stuff. I'm going to turn them. I'm going to turn to you. But, Lord, hey, I want to be a blessing for you today. Whatever it is, I don't want it just to be about me and my stuff. I want you to... Whatever it is happening out here, then, Lord, help me be aware of what you're doing. And then, Lord, just help me to be that channel of love and grace and, and all that's needed to draw, that you're drawing that person into your kingdom. Wow. Wow. It's a powerful thing that he's entrusted us. He would, what a plan he has. What a plan that he would use us like this. It's powerful.
Sherry and I, God, it's part of, our, part of our story. I'll just share it quick. The Lord clearly told us that we were to leave the church that we were at before. Some of you I know that were there and all. <clears throat> and uh, we'd been at that church for over 35 years, and we thought we were going to be dead and buried out there. We didn't, we, uh, we you know, that's, that's what we thought. And, uh, and God says, no, um, no, your time is done here. And boy, I tell you what, church, that was, that was tough. We're talking trusting with all of our heart and leaning not on our own understanding and in all of our ways, we're going to acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. We lived that out. We lived out so many scripture here, but so we, so we did. We, um, in November, in November of the last Sunday of November of 2010 was our last Sunday there, and we, the Lord said it was time for us to leave, and we did. And we walked out and, uh, and didn't have, there was no, there was no provision Really, I mean, we just walked and said, okay, Lord, we're going to trust you. We know that this is what you said that you want us to do, and we're going to do it. And so we did. And for the month of December, we walked and prayed every day. Okay, Lord, here we are. Don't know what you have for us. Have no idea, but we're trusting you. Don't know when. Don't know what it is. Don't know where it is. Don't know how you're going to do it, but we just know. If you ask us to do that, then I know that you have something special. We're not going to, we're just going to, I mean, I had people saying, hey, why don't you get your license to do this, to, to be a trainer, to do this and that and the other. And I just said, you know what? No. I just don't feel that at all. Ew. Ew. I said, you know, the Lord has something. I don't know what it is, but he's got something. So we walked the whole month of December. We were in shock. We were just out there walking. But we, it, the funny thing was, was we, we'd, we would you know, be walking and we'd say, do you hear the birds singing? I mean, do you smell the, the you know, because it's a lot of times, and we know this because we get caught up in life and it's so busy that we don't even hear, we don't even hear and see the beautiful things that are happening just in our nat and stuff. We're just enjoying that and, you know, just, you know, uh, just really going, wow, this is amazing. So we did a whole month, December. Now we're into January. Now, now shock is over, and, and now you're kind of going, okay, here we are in January. So here we are, Lord. We're, we're still walking. We're still praying. And, uh, and we got to, a, got to a point, and I remember, I remember very distinctly leaving the house and heading out for, for a prayer walk, and, and and it was just like the Lord said, okay, you've, you've asked me enough. Now then it's time to thank me for what I'm going to do. Just thank me for what, for what I have for you. I said, absolutely. So I just started thanking him. Lord, I know I thank you for whatever, whatever it is you have. I know you've got something. So we just walked that out and prayed that, that prayer, trusting the Lord with all of our heart, leaning not on, on our own understanding. We're going to all of our ways. We're acknowledging him, and he's going to direct our path. We're living it out. So we decided, we, we, we said, you know what, we, we got the burning bush experience down in Phoenix at, at uh, pastor school in 2002, in February of 2002, and we made some, had some relationships and friends down there. So we, let's, let's reconnect down there, and, uh, and let's see if the Lord wants to speak, speak into our hearts down there. So we, we did. We went down uh, to Phoenix there and, and, um, and just had a wonderful time of uh, just being having the Lord minister to us last day a Wednesday, uh, we were there, and uh, the morning the morning uh, message pa Math, Pastor Matthew Barnett preached basically about how his dad Tommy had taken him to L.A. at the Dream Center and dropped him off and left him for dead at 21, and said, "Okay, here's your here it is. This is the, I mean that was his and and he told that story and everything. It was just an amazing story. So after he finished his message. Then Pastor Tommy comes up and he says, I just feel like that I need for us to turn and just, just seek the Lord and see what he wants to speak into our hearts. So we did that. And uh, been praying all this time now. Okay, Lord, I know you've got something. Now I thank you for what you have for me. Now then he, 
Now they get to this point, and he very clearly says, Rick, I want the part of you you're not willing to give me. And I didn't have to ask him what he was talking about. And I said, I cannot do that. And he said, I know. But if you'll say yes, it'll be me that does it and not you. And I said, if that's what you want me to do, then yes. I don't have to now, Lord, but if that's what you want, then yes. Came home from that. It was, I don't know, maybe it wasn't very, we barely got home. Got a call from Pastor John and Eva. I said, hey, can you come and help us at St. John's? We got a, you know, the story of, of that. We walked out in December praying. In January, we started that, and then we started thanking him for whatever it was, whenever, wherever, however. Went down to Phoenix. He spoke to us down there, spoke to me personally. Said, okay, now, I've got something for you, but you're going to have to do something here. You're going to have to relinquish this part of, turn it loose. Okay. And so now here we are. And here we are. Blessed beyond measure, <laughs> you guys. Blessed beyond measure over the last six and a half years. I had the privilege when I was down in, in Anaheim Wednesday night. <clears throat> Pastor Tommy Barnett was there. And after everything was over and we were all done, I walked down and was able to talk to him. And I said, Pastor Tommy, um, told him who I was, told him the story. And he said, oh, he, he, he remembered because I, I was part of the uh, sports outreach down there uh, for, out of their church and stuff. He said, I remember, I remember who you are. And I said, uh, well, I'm pastoring a church now, Pastor Tommy. And tears came to his eyes, and he gave me about two or three of the biggest hugs. He said, you have made my night tonight. And I said, man, I'll tell you what, thank you for your ministry and using God using you, and here we are. I mean, it's just amazing. So just wanted to tell you a personal story of how this message applies. You can trust him with everything. When you don't, when it, when you say how in the world, you just step out in faith and you trust. You pray and you seek the Lord and you trust with all of your heart. He will not let you down. I'm telling you today, you don't have to believe, this word says it. I'm a living testimony of that and I'm sure it's happened in your life too. And maybe over and over again, how that you stepped out and said, how, how is this going to work? But I'm trusting you, Lord. And he comes through every time. What a powerful, what a wonderful God that we serve. True to his word. He's trustworthy. He is faithful. He loves you. I wish I could tell you how much he loves you. Well, he, I think you probably know. Maybe a little bit. I don't know if we can fully grasp his infinite love. Because, you know, most, a lot of our love is conditional. God loves us whenever we're, we're not lovable. He still loves us. He loves us. It's no, there's no, I, I, can't, I can't do things good enough to make him love me more. And that's hard for me to understand that. Because I'm kind of a, I like to, I'm a people pleaser. I want to do things to please people and whatever. It's part of my personality trait. It's the way it is. And God says it's not even about that. He has, he has blessed this church so much. I, I, try to, I try to celebrate it. I try to tell you, and I think a lot of you understand this is a very unique place. I'm not saying that the Lord is not at other churches, because he is. And he's, and he's doing great things at other churches. Yes. But there is God's presence, his favor, his blessing is on this place. And all I've got to do is just get out of the way and let him go. 
and not try to mess it up. I don't want to do that. Because everything that's happened, he has, he has built, I, I use this term, you know, you read the story in Ezekiel of the Valley of Dead Dry Bones. He has built a church here at 430 Downey Avenue out of a valley of dead dry bones. This church was done. They were going to sell it. I was just with Pastor Cliff down there. He was telling the story to some of the other staff and some of the other people. He was going to, he was, we were going to finish this thing off in 2011 in, at Easter time. They were going to lock the doors. He was going to sell it. And they were going to build a youth center over here at Bethel. That was his plan. You didn't need to hear his story on that. But he realized, he realized, not too far into this thing, I'm not going to mess with this. God's doing something here. And I'm just going to tell he said, and finally, I'll never forget it, one day we were in his office, summertime, we were telling him, he was, we gave him a, a monthly report, went into his office, we'd tell him what was going on. And he just sat there, I'll never forget him shaking his head, and he said, you know what, you guys? I'm taking my hands off of this thing. He said, I don't want to be any part of, of trying to do something the Lord is wanting to do and, and, uh, and me want my own thing. He said, you guys go have church over there, and if we can do anything to help you, let us know. And that's what we did. Whew. And you know what? It isn't about, it's not about formulas, and it's not about because we're good enough or because we sing the right songs. Or it's, not, it's none of that. You guys, I'm telling you, it's just because that God loves us. And we come together and we worship. He's, he has built this church of people that love him, have worshipped him for generations, knows how to give. They, you're a giving church. You're a loving church, a caring church. You, like to, you love to support missions around the world. You love to pray. Whew, what isn't there to bless, right? Oh, my. And now then he just says, okay, as you gather, as you walk through the doors, we sense his presence. And we know that this is the place where he abides. For this is the temple. Jehovah God abides here. And we are standing or sitting in his presence on holy ground. Oh, my. And that, is, that happens every time we gather. Saturday night, Sunday morning, Wednesday night. Yeah, he's here. He is here. So thankful. Wanted to give you just a, a story, a, just a report of God's goodness and what he, what he is doing here just because he wants to just pour out his spirit and his blessing on us as we gather. And we thank him for it. Father, we love you. We love you. Father, can I say it again? We love you. We worship you. We exalt you. We magnify you. You are holy. You are worthy to be praised. You are the rose of Sharon. You are the bright and morning star. You are everything to us. And you say also, hey, also you're my friends and I'm going to bless you. We're not servants anymore. No. You call us friend. And now then you reveal who you are to us. And we have this, this relationship with you that is can't even put into words. With the almighty God, creator of everything. Loving, kind, gracious, full of mercy and grace. We worship you tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this powerful word and this wonderful story of Rahab the harlot who you took. Didn't have a great family line. Didn't have a really good, great reputation. Didn't have a good job. And you took her and used her and now she's in the hall of faith in your word. And I pray, Lord, that you would do that in all of our lives, Lord. Use us in that way. Help us, Lord, to, to act out our faith, to say, yes, we trust you, and we're going to act on that trust, and we're going to step out, and we're going to trust you, Lord. 
with whatever it is that's going on in our lives. We're going to trust you with that. We thank you that we can do that. And we have the assurance, we have this blessed assurance in us that you are truthful, trustworthy, and faithful. And we go, yes, I'm going to stand on that. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, the name above all names. Amen.